Let's consider the following Boolean expression. F is A or A and B. Now it's possible to prove that this minimizes to just A. Now to help us understand why this is the case, we're going to use a truth table in the first instance to prove that A or A and B is in fact A. Here we can see we have a truth table that's not complete. And what I'm now going to do, I'm going to complete it for the Boolean expression above. So I'm going to create a column here that's for A and B. Now of course the previous videos would have shown you an AND gate at this point, but what I want you to remind yourself is, is that when you see A and B, that's being produced by a logic AND gate. And an AND gate produces a 1 at its output only when both of its inputs are a 1. So straight away I can see the only occasion where A and B are both a 1 is in the last row. So I'll put a 1 here. And all the others are in fact 0. And of course that column we can see is what you would expect for an AND gate output. The next thing we need to do is to take the A and all that with the output from an AND gate which would be the A and B. Now this means we'll be looking at this column here and this column. And if we go to each of the inputs in turn, because remember what would happen here is that the A together with the A and B would be inputs to a two input OR gate, where one of the inputs would have been the A and the other input would have been the A and B. Of course the A and B would have been taken from the output of an AND gate. We'll have a look at the circuit a little bit later. But here now what I'm going to do is to OR together what the A variable is, which is zero, together with what A and B gives us, which is also a zero. Under those circumstances we should realize we have a zero. If we go to the next one we can see that A is a zero and A and B is a zero and when we OR them together we get a zero. Next we can see that A is a one whereas A and B is a zero. This will give us a one at the output because we only need one one present to the input of a two input OR gate. Finally we can see that A is a one and A and B is a one. And there's two ones present, and two ones into an OR gate will give us a one at the output. So there we've completed the truth table for the Boolean expression above, A or A and B. Now the key now is to look at the A column and look at the A or A and B column, and you should see they're identical. Consequently, it is correct to say that A or A and B is A because we can see their columns are the same, so they must have the same logic functionality. Another way to look at the expression, which I'll write down again here, we have F is A or A and B, is to ask the question, what happens when A is a zero? Well, let's make it zero. So that will be zero or zero and B. Now under these conditions, we can see A is a zero, and we need to ask ourselves, what is zero and B? Well, we should know by now that if we have a zero into an AND gate, and zero and B represent the fact that we have an AND gate needed to produce zero and B, it'll be a zero. So we end up with a zero or a zero. Now two zeros into an OR gate gives us a zero. If I look at the expression again here, f is a or a and b, and on this occasion I let a be a 1, and I will now or that with 1 and b. Now I will end up here with a 1, or, well 1 and b depends on whatever b is, so that's what I'll have there. Now what we can see here is I have a 1 or a B going into a 2 input OR gate. Now for an OR gate, we only need one 1 present at the input to have a 1 at the output. And this is that condition here, there's at least one 1 present. So that will be a 1. Now if we look carefully, we can see that when A was a 0, the output was a 0, and when the A was a 1, 
the output is a 1. So we can conclude again that the expression f equals a or a and b minimizes to an a. This is the combinational logic circuit for f is a or a and b. Now, what we need to do now is to ask a question, right, well, let's, let's take a and let's make that a zero. Now, that zero will come along here and will come to the input of this AND gate. And, of course, the a will also come down here and will be the input to this OR gate here. Now, what we'll have the other input to the AND gate is a B. And the thing is, we don't know what B is. It could be a 1 or a 0. But regardless of what it is, we can see here with the 0 at the input to an AND gate, what we'll have at this point is a 0. And of course, that 0 will now go into the other input of the OR gate here. And consequently, what we'll have at the output here is a zero. Let's rerun this, and this time let's put a one at a, which I'll draw in a different color. I'll put that down as a one. Now, of course, that one will appear here at the input to this AND gate, and of course, the one will come down here and will be a one at the input to the OR gate. Now, if we look at the AND gate, we can see that one of the inputs is a one. So the output from the AND gate will be whatever B is. So if B was a 0, the output would be a 0. If B is a 1, the output will be a 1. The key here, however, is have a look at the OR gate. And you can see that there is a 1 as an input to the OR gate. So the output will be a 1 regardless of what the other input is. And here again we've shown that when A was a 0, the output is a 0. And when that A was a 1, the output is a 1. Consequently, the output is whatever A is. So A or A and B minimizes to A.